With an increasing number of direct to consumer brands out there offering awesome deals, we thought we would take advantage of our new Fazari Delano Peak showing up today and uh, walk you through what it would look like to buy your first bike online. Now, some of you guys might remember last year, we did quite a few videos with the Fizari LaSalle Peak, which is their big, burly 170 millimeter enduro bike. Um, this year, we're gonna be doing a lot more fun videos and gonna be using a Fizari bike again. And I thought I'd like to have a little bit more of a well-rounded, easier to pedal bike um, for kind of some of the how-tos and tech features we're gonna be working on. So I opted for the Delano Peak. It's a bike I've ridden in the past and I really, really like, and I think it is a great value. Uh, and for, for that reason, we're gonna be working with Fizari again. Um, what that brings me to is they let me pick the bike I wanted to ride this year in these videos. And I thought, you know, why not maybe demystify or offer some insight and advice for people who are new to the sport of mountain biking, uh, maybe, don't want to go into a shop if they're not close or intimidated, whatever it might be, and wanted to help narrow down the choices when it comes to buying a bike online. So today we're going to get into it. One of the first things that you're going to want to do is evaluate the type of rider you are and more importantly, the type of rider that you want to be, um, right? No matter how much or how little you ride, one year from now, if you're riding once a week, you're going to be way better than you are today. Um, I think it's important though to not, you know, overestimate how gnarly or crazy you're going to be because uh, sometimes a bigger, longer travel, heavier bike isn't going to be the best tool for your job. Um, so I think, you know, again, evaluating your local terrain is going to be one of the more important things to take a look at. Um, is it really steep? Is it really rocky or rooty? Are you going to be just going out and exploring more? Are you gonna prioritize health and fitness and exercise or trying to push yourself on the most demanding trails possible and hitting big jumps and drops? Do you just wanna do something in the middle and have a jack of all trades bike, so to speak? Um, so I think once you kind of narrow down what you're looking to do personally and what terrain you have nearby, you'll be able to better pick what category bike you're gonna get into, right? So for example, Fazari, if you click on dual suspension mountain bikes, They've got six total offerings. Two of them are e-bikes um, or e-mountain bikes, so, but that leaves four available options for dual suspension mountain bikes. Now, obviously one is the 170 mil LaSalle Peak, which I talked about, which while it's great for, you know, bike park and enduro riding, um, I opted for this because it's just, it's a lot of bike to pedal around day to day on the mellower, flatter, you know, more commonly ridden trails. Stepping down, you get into the Delano Peak, um, and you can keep working your way down until you get to like a, you know, a pretty performance oriented cross country race bike. And then they've got like a, you know, middle of the road 130 mil bike, which will kind of be a do everything. I think the Delano is kind of the, the best choice in my opinion for a wide option or a wide variety of riders, uh, especially when you throw in the fact that you can long shock it and put a 160 mil fork on there if you want. Um, which is definitely something I will possibly uh, consider doing because we did it on our last bike and had a great time. So, um, all right, so now that you've kind of isolated what sort of a bike you need and what type of rider you are, we'll get into the buying experience, right? You'll, you'll navigate the site. Uh, a lot of the direct-to-consumer brands will have fields for you to fill in or maybe customize stuff. I think Fizari does a really good job of offering um, the I don't want to say the most, but a very high amount of customization uh, from their 23 point custom fit uh, program where you can give them your height dimensions, you know, your, your wingspan, what size drop or post you want. They'll even cut bars down. They'll install tubeless tire inserts if you want. So uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can do there so that when the bike shows up, all you really got to do is assemble it. Um, you don't have to, you know, tape and install, you know, sealant and tires or put that, that cush core in there. So uh, we're at that point now. The bike has shown up. We got the Delano Peak 
Comp, which is a rather affordable bike, I would say, for a performance, uh, you know, rider looking to get into riding. So the Delano Comp model we got retails for $37.99. Uh, comes with DVO suspension, Shimano SLX components, um, and again, they they kind of go up from there, and you can add some customizations from there. The reason I wanted to pick this model was I thought it'd be a good competitive price point. Uh, I think a lot of riders are probably gonna be able to afford and get into a you know high quality performance mountain bike around there. And then it would allow me throughout the year to ride this bike and bring you along on the journey as I upgrade parts the way and in, in the order of which I think is most important. So the intention will be to sort of ride this bike as it is out of the box, show you how well and capable it is. Uh, but then as time goes on and our riding progresses, give you a little bit of insight of where you should start to look and what things matter most when it comes to improving the performance and the safety of your mountain bike experience. So uh, let's open up these boxes and get this thing built. So Fazari ships uh, the Delano in two boxes. We've got the frame and then the wheel set here. QR codes, uh, which are gonna have some instructions, manuals, etc. As you can see here, our tires are nice and set up for us. WTB wheels, everything is nicely packaged and protected on both sides. Brake rotors are installed. Tubeless sealant inside, which is awesome. Don't have to worry about making a mess or spilling it in our own garage. Um, so all that's left to do there really is top them off with air and slide them into the frame. All right, so next up, what we've all been waiting for, the frame. Uh, proudly built by Bryant. Drew, enjoy the Delano Peak. Thank you, Bryant. Appreciate you putting this thing together and shipping it out. We opted for the uh, green color, which I think is gonna look pretty sweet out there in the sunshine, which we hopefully get soon. So the frame is uh, Velcroed to the foam pads on either side. So although it looks like minimal padding, which uh, I guess from an environmental standpoint is cool, you kind of are like, man, there's not a lot of protection on that bike, but every point was Velcroed to that foam, which is attached to the cardboard sleeves on the inside. So that bike was not moving. And there we go. I like that color, very cool. Alrighty, well, let's get this thing hung in the work stand and put the wheels and tires on. Okay, so that uh, took all of about three and a half minutes to get all the Velcro undone and this bike out of the box. Minimal tools needed, um, four millimeter here for the stem so we can get the handlebars mounted. Uh, gonna need a shock pump, an Allen for that rear axle. I think if you're buying a bike, you probably already have some tools. If not, a basic bike tool kit uh, will get you by with everything you'll need. Feedback Sports Plug Plug obviously has got some pretty awesome tools and they've got some some dialed kits that will get you up and running. You'll also need a shock pump. Um, Fizari does also have some really cool kit options. Um, we opted to not have them send in any of that stuff because we've got a shop full of it. But uh, if you're a new rider, there are some really cool beginner packages from uh, floor pump, shock pump, multi-tool, bike wash, and chain lube kits. So um, you can really get a one-stop shopping experience and be not a bike rider to a set and ready to go mountain bike rider. So we made a video about cockpit setup, um, which uh, we will link down below and I think will be really helpful for riders um, both new and experienced, just kind of thinking about concepts and how to's. So uh, what I like to do at this stage is just kind of get everything 
just so it's not flopping around and loose, but don't crank it down yet because obviously standing here is gonna be way different than when you're on the bike. And so there's no need to crank and tension everything up if you're just gonna loosen it to adjust it in the future. Um, so that's in a spot where it's gonna stay, I'll leave it there. Also worth noting that some stems have um, a tightening protocol where you'll either have to cinch up, you know, the bottom all the way and close a gap or the, the top to close a gap. So try to look on the sides, top and bottom and see if that's the case, uh, which doesn't appear to be here. So in that situation, you'll just end up kind of trying to tighten everything up evenly. And uh, we'll do that when we get to that step. So next up, we'll get this derailleur hung and uh, install the wheels, air up the suspension and put it on the ground. Uh, so for those of you who maybe haven't assembled a bike with a clutch derailleur, um, whether you're fixing a flat or building it for the first time, making sure that you flip this lever to the off position uh, is going to make sure that that spring is a lot easier to move uh, compared to that on position. As you can see, that's a lot more force. So put that there. Also uh, shift the gear and uh, make sure that you are all the way in the smallest gear on the cassette. That way the derailleur is far and out of your way. Drop down here by pushing right on the back of the derailleur. You're going to slide it up into the dropout and be careful uh, to not scratch your new frame. Get that brake rotor right in between the brake pads and then you're going to slide that axle in there and snug it up. Uh, once you got that in there, give it a spin, make sure the brakes aren't rubbing, everything looks good. Give it a pedal, make sure everything is lined up. Then you can turn your clutch back on, make sure that's engaged properly. Then we'll go install the front, air up the suspension. You get a little carrying bag here. Uh, inside that, comes some important documents of information. Uh, we've got our little bolt-on mud guard for the DVO fork, bottle cage, a spare tube, so, as well as some extra parts for the DVO suspension. A couple of little tools here. So if you don't want to buy yourself a tool kit, you've got the essentials there. Uh, unboxing tutorial little notepad reminder here so you know what to inflate your fork to but I will say uh, the DVO suspension stuff um, uh, is something that requires a little bit more time to set up uh, make sure you get the settings right and dialed it will reward you in the long run um, so definitely take a look at the info get those chambers set up work on um, you know compression rebound damping we've We'll link that video we've made in the past down there as well. So uh, you guys are off and running and have a good start on this new bike. So all in all, a pretty easy experience. Um, bike looks great. Can't wait to get this thing out on the trails and in the dirt. So stay tuned for some future videos where um, we start riding this thing, giving you guys some tips and pointers and uh, bringing you along for the ride as we choose to update any of these accessories. Although I gotta say, it's pretty dialed right now. I'm not sure what we're gonna need to do, but uh, stand by for future videos, guys. Thanks very much for subscribing, and we'll see you in future videos.